Westeros is a town that has nothing to do with Game of Thrones. It's Sweden's second ugliest city, and it's also where you find an exhibition called Retro Gathering. Let's have a look at retro computers and retro nerds. Retro Gathering is one of the biggest events in Sweden for retro computers and retro games. Tons of collectors and enthusiasts visit this exhibition. The first gathering took place in 2005 and it's become an annual tradition since then. Except for 2020 and 2021, nothing at all happened during those miserable years. According to this exhibition, retro is defined as games and hardware from roughly the 1970s to the 1990s. Some people even claim that newer hardware can be defined as retro, such as the PlayStation 2. I don't agree. As far as I'm concerned, time has stood still since the early 2000s, and no one can convince me otherwise. This exhibition is filled with, well, exhibits of all kinds, tons and tons of old computers and consoles. But one of the prime reasons that people visit Retro Gathering is the marketplace. You can find tons of old computers and games and consoles here, and lots of other stuff as well. I'm not gonna buy anything myself, unfortunately. I live in a shoebox, I wouldn't have space to fit in anything. You have a lot of different types of games here, like uh, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, but you also have PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3. Where do you think the line is drawn between retro and newer consoles? I would say that uh, my line is uh, for the PS2 and uh, Xbox and uh, GameCube. Newer than that, it's still not current yet, but new games. So. so PS2, that's retro, PS3, right out. <laughs> that's for me, yes, that's correct. It's almost like a moving target, but I think in general people tend to say up till Dreamcast or, you know, PlayStation 1. Um, it's interesting because that's been something people have said for quite some years, so we should move forward. Um, I think looking at the, the computers you have here, you have up until Quake. So I think we're talking about the end of the 90s. The exhibition isn't extremely huge, but it's a great place for socializing with other retro geeks. The interesting thing about being here is that everyone has a story to tell. Not everyone wants to tell it on camera, but everyone has an interesting tale to tell about how they got into retro gaming or retro computers or retro programming as well. You have so many things on sale here. Do you know what the strangest thing you have for sale is? Yeah, I think it's this one. It's a traffic counter, which has been Swedish made uh, by the Road Institute in Sweden. So it's based on a 6502 processor, which uh, combines even a um, charging unit and battery unit. So this, you have this um, lines along the road and counting cars and you can even particle made or whatever reasons you wanted. You have a loaded program here by the serial port and um, off you go. You have so many old computers and interesting stuff here. What's your pride and joy? That's a good question. I have a, uh, an, a Imsai, Imsai uh, 8080, you know, from War Games. This one with the switches. I have one of those. You have a lot of games for sale here, but uh, what's the most expensive one you have? Oh, it's my Mega CD games, and uh, it's a uh, Shadow. Uh, no, Shadow uh, of the Beast. Shadow Beast <laughs> Two for uh, 1,500 kronor. Bloody. <laughs> that's a lot of cash for a game that's pretty bad, actually. <laughs> yes, but uh, you can't find two of them. What do you like best about retro games and retro collecting in general? I love that it's so much to value and uh, to uh, collect. 
and also uh, I like to uh, find like interesting, uh, difficult things to find and uh, you know show them or sell them further or just collect them for myself because it's such a it's nostalgia. What's your favorite retro console? Nintendo 64 because my most popular game is uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time. By the way, awesome shirt! I yes. love it! Thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of young kids here as well, probably dragged here by their dads, wondering why their dad is so excited about old pixelated graphics. Look at this, an old Commodore 64 and a new one. Many people like the old design, the bread bin, but I have to say that I prefer the new one. It's sleeker, it's more modern. Bloody is that 450 for a Zelda 2 game? I should have kept mine. 450 Swedish crowns for Turtles 1 for NES. Bloody you have to be a maskist to pay that price. And to play the game for that matter. Rise from your grave. Dr. Grant, how did you become so muscular? Oh, you know, I've been working out, lifting dinosaurs. Super scope, if you don't want to be able to aim anything in a Super Nintendo game. Wow, a lot of old Game & Watch games. These t-shirts are just 50 crowns. What's the secret? Why is it so cheap? So it looks like you're really into some retro stuff. Is that correct? Yeah, that's really correct. Uh, my best friend, he uh, have a shop. You see this uh, logo, Samla has a collector house in North Coping. He just started, he's been buying stuff for when he was little. Every stuff he no, notice is it's a collector thing. So you get all from coins to cards to toys to games, every game you can buy it off. Even uh, movies, uh, VHD, everything. I wouldn't know anything about the MSX if it wasn't for La Mulana. If you haven't played it, played it. It's an awesome game. This sword computer apparently uses the same hardware as MSX, but it's not exactly compatible. So almost identical, but not quite. I just had a chat with one of the organizers and apparently there's a bit of a dispute whether or not the first exhibition was in 2005 or 2006. Since that's so far back in the mists of time, apparently no one really remembers. It's not that easy playing one-handed. Pinball Fantasies was a legendary pinball game for Amiga, Atari and PC, developed by Digital Illusions, which later became DICE. These days, DICE only makes stuff like Battlefield, which I never have played, to be honest. This is a high score competition for Pinball Fantasies, which goes on throughout the day. No, I'm not gonna play myself. I totally suck at this. Look at those numbers. People are pretty good at this game. Which one do you prefer, Pinball Fantasies or Pinball Dreams? To be honest, uh, I like Slam Tilt more on the Amiga, that was a later version. <laughs> to be honest, I haven't played any of those, but I know <laughs> Michael has, but I've heard that Pinball Dreams is the better one. Have you ever been to an auction? I have to admit that I've never been to one, I've just seen them on TV. This is a retro auction filled with exciting items like a Commodore 128 system handbook. There's a lot of other stuff being auctioned up, like these Mario and Luigi paintings for example. But I have a feeling you won't be seeing any million dollar Mario 64s at this auction. Actually, mea culpa, I was just being stupid. The paintings are not included in the list of items for the auction. They're just for sale in general. Really exciting auction. The first item was not sold. The second one went for a 50 crown instead of 70. That was the starting price. A luggable laptop from 2005 for 80, no, 90 crowns. An old Commodore printer for 50 crowns. No one wants to buy this one. There's a music quiz here in the afternoon. I have no idea what they're gonna ask about, but I think I wanna try it anyway. Should we try it? Come on, let's give it a shot. 
That quiz was impossible. I couldn't think of any C64 composer, so I entered Chris Hulsbeck for everything. And there you have it. That was a quick look at Retro Gathering 2023 in Vesteros, Sweden. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe for even more geeky adventures in the future. You can check out this video as well from Nadcon 2023.